just recently a two-year-old Mauda with Iraqi Kurdish parents uh, who was born in Germany was shot in the face and killed by Belgian police. Uh, they shot at a van of migrants and uh, really asylum seekers and refugees trying to get to Britain from Germany via Belgium. I mean, it is outrageous. Her lovely, beautiful face and to think that she's no longer amongst us and what her family must be feeling. Uh, she has a three-year-old brother. Uh, what it's a heart, tragedy. It is a tragedy. It's heartbreaking. And this is the result of an immigration policy that sees uh, refugees and migrants not as human beings mm. and they can do anything about it. Theo Franken, the immigration minister, has a history of anti-immigration policy and, uh, and drive against Sudanese asylum mm. seekers, against you know people who are actually trying to cross borders and he said uh, getting a ticket on a smuggler's boat is not uh, free travel and uh, access to Europe. This is disgusting and it is unbelievable that, mm -hmm. but we know and we've said many, many times that this end of this policy, this is what happens, mm -hmm. that they are going to shoot at the migrants, but the fact that they say the boats should be returned in the Mediterranean Sea is not a joke. This is what they're going to do eventually. They are going to start shooting at, at the boats of and fleeing migrants and this is horrendous and unacceptable. Now we know that as a result of Fortress Europe, so many people are losing their lives uh, at sea. Uh, they're being shot at. They're actually vigilante groups uh, trying to catch migrants as they come into Europe. And now, of course, we are faced with little children being shot in the face by the police in major cities in in Europe. This is really dangerous and tragic. I mean. You know, Ailan uh, coming and being washed up on shore, the little boy who was killed, who, who died at sea, and now there are children dying and being shot at by European police. And this is, you know, th this is not an isolated incident. Uh, we could see this through, even in Britain, the uh, result of uh, Tory uh, immigration policy. We see what's happened to the British citizens of Windrush generation and this could happen to everybody. I mean the point really I want to make Maria, anything uh, the right wing will do, the anti-immigrants will do to refugees and migrants, they'll do them to the citizens of Europe later on. Make no mistakes. Mm -hmm. This is a scenario not just for migrants and the other people that you, you could uh, you know um, push them aside and make you know make them devoid of humanity actually this is about the future of Europe it's about what Europe is about and that's why it's important for us to defend the rights of the migrants and refugees because we're defending the rights of human beings on the mainland Europe and everywhere else and of course the issue is that look borders are open for so many things for capital you know uh, for birds to migrate for and of course for the rich, there are no borders for the rich. The rich can get up and move anytime they want and live in any place they want. Migration policies and borders are for the poor and working class and it's an attack on them, an assault on them. And it's something that needs to be wholeheartedly opposed. And you can see how the right wing, it doesn't matter in what shape or color they come, uh, in whether they are the Tory right wing or the neo Nazis or the fascists or the atheist right wing, anti immigrants, you'll see, or you know, uh, Christian right, or you know, even some people on the left because they say too much immigration needs to be controlled and, and managed. Now, all of that they share one thing they are all anti immigrants and they contribute to this policy of closed borders and it, they are denying human rights to a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Mm. And what's interesting is that people want the right for freedom of movement for themselves. They're upset if they need to get a visa, they don't like it if they have to wait too long in an immigration line, they want to travel wherever they want, but when it comes to the, this right for other people, then 
sometimes people are wary of it. And I think one of the, the realities is that people are concerned about the effects of migration on the infrastructure of a society, schools, hospitals. There won't be enough if so many people come in. And I think one of the realities is that if you look at Britain, for example, more Brightons left the country than, than entered the country just until very recently. And if we take all the Britons or Brightons, however you say it, who've left the country, um, if they had stayed in, we would need more infrastructure anyway. So the, the accent has to be, or the emphasis has to be on the state providing infrastructure for people who come because they will contribute and be a positive um, you know, Contrib contributory to, force. I to mean, that, society, that, yes. Anybody who says that only the capitalists, only the rich contribute, and the working class doesn't, mm -hmm. it, that's the you know that's a reflection of inverse reality. Mm -hmm. The reality is that people who work, people who contribute to society, they are the ones who are making the wealth. So immigrants are. You know, the engines of any society, any society who accepts immigrants, you can see that the economy fl flourishes and moves forward and grows. We, you know, immigrants get the job done, according to Hamilton uh, uh, musical. And that's what it is. And we need to recognize this, that immigrants contribute, labor contributes. Actually, capitalists are the ones are idle and they're not making any contribution to society's life. So this anti-immigrant pol immigration policy, anti-immigrant uh, uh, forces, it doesn't matter how they are, they're atheists, non-atheists, uh, religious, non-religious, right-wing, left-wing, any kind of those, any type of those uh, uh, forces in society that are effectively contributing to denying people's right to freedom of movement. That's why we should be supporting without any if or but open borders. That's yeah. what we support. Yeah. And I think one of the other arguments too is that there's not enough money, you know. But the reality is there is always money for Meghan and Harry to get married, for the Queen to fix her castles, uh, as well as to bail out banks private enterprises you know they keep talking about free market but there's always state intervention when it has to save uh, capitalist institutions like big banks that have messed up the lives of so many people but suddenly when it comes to the nhs when it comes to helping migrants and asylum seekers when it comes to basic human welfare there's never any money yes and imagine for a second that you shut the door of the uh, nhs and hospitals and say sorry Full. We don't have any more spaces for this, and nobody else allowed to use NHS because it is over capacity. No, it's a fundamental right for people to have free health at the point of need, and that's what is. That's the whole idea of NHS. The reality is, it's possible. It needs to be invested. Everybody contributes to society, uh, labor, uh, the working class work and contribute and they need to benefit. In the same way, migrants are actually the most hard-working section of the society and they should be benefiting from all the riches of society because it's their right. So we defend open borders without if or but. Yeah, That's a basic and I think human right. The thing about open borders too is that people will say it's an extreme idea, it's a ridiculous idea. Well, you know, women demanding the right to vote was seen to be extreme and ridiculous. Calling for an end to slavery was seen to be extreme and ridiculous. The reality is that if you look at the right to move as a basic human right, just like the right to housing, the right to health care, the right to an education, the right to live a free free from violence and fear, you can then understand that as a human right, the right to move, the right to live where you want is also an important human right that needs to be defended, not just for the rich, because that's already there, but for the poor, the working class and the majority of people across the world. Now, some people argue that the culture of immigrants and people who arrive in European countries immigrants, yeah is incompatible with liberal democracy and the fundamental you know, sets and norms of the society. It depends on what you promote. If you, first of all, immigrants and those who are running from Islamists and reactionally set up an environment, that's why they come into Europe, because they see, they, they see more compatibility between themselves and the future of their children with the European uh, culture and institution society, that's why they're coming over here, because they want to benefit from that, because they, they think this is what they want to achieve for the children. Now, 
and also depends on what you promote. If you constantly associate immigrants with Islamists and the most reactionary section of the you know, uh, society, of course you, you, you're going to promote that and you encourage that. But if you associate immigrants with the reality of what they are, that they want to have a free uh, society and a better future for their children and encourage that, then you'll see there's no, incom uh, there's no incompatibility between what they want and what the majority of people in uh, uh, European societies want and they live in, in those environments. Actually, this is the culture of the ruling elite in Europe that associate these immigrants with uh, um, with the most reactionary element of society. And also, like anything else, you know, uh, reaction is not stitched in the DNA of someone come from, coming from Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan. And enlightenment values stitched in the D DNA of everyone who's white and born in Europe. We know that's not the case. There's lots of different opinions. Culture is constantly moving, changing. Not everyone has the same cultural values. And in, in the reality is that equating regression with everyone that's fleeing hunger and poverty and war and repression and the religious right is a an absurd position to make yes absolutely and that's why we need to oppose it we uh, defend open borders we want the borders to be open to refugees and asylum seekers yeah they deserve the right is part of the human rights and also they are the best of the world who are running away from those oppressive en uh, environment and they want a better future and we need to welcome them as for op open borders need to be open for mm -hmm. people that need to be welcomed and actually uh, human values equal values universal values the right and what people aimed for needs to be promoted not the most reactionary element mm. uh, and ideology that usually associated uh, with the immigrants and finally some people who argue against open borders against migrants against migration policies they're very upset and fragile when you call their position uh, inhuman when you call their position well let's be frank racist uh, you know they they feel very, very sensitive to, to hear such things. But let's be honest. When you defend closed borders, you defend the death and murder of countless human beings, people who are stuck behind borders, people who are just like you, just like me, who want a better life. That's why we came here as well. That's why so many people have come to Europe as well. You defend that. So it is inhuman just because anti-migrant sentiment has become normalized and mainstream doesn't make your position right. The right position, the human position, the position that is a one that belongs in the 21st century is open borders, no ifs, no buts. Throw open the gates.